Grace is by Television News Roundup, a compilation of media stories in the weekend. I'm Tunde Alabi. Thank you for being part of the program today. The terror group ISIS has claimed responsibility for the London attack, which struck at the heart of British Parliament in Westminster. ISIS claimed the attacker was a soldier for the Islamic terror group. The attacker ran over a group of people on Westminster Bridge, killing three people, attacked the police man with a knife and was shot dead by armed police officers. For months, counter-terrorism officials have warned an attack in Britain was highly likely, and now it has happened. Moments of terror in the heart of London, an area normally crowded with tourists. It was quite loud and um, uh, asked three like bang, 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 and then all of a sudden, we could see on the road, people who started running like crazy, and I was like, what happened? What he and others heard was the sound of police shooting the attacker. Officials say emerged from a car and fatally stabbed a police officer outside Parliament. The attack started when a car was driven over Westminster Bridge, hitting and injuring a number of members of the public, also including three police officers on their way back from a commendation ceremony. The car then crashed near to Parliament, and at least one man, armed with the knife, continued the attack and tried to enter Parliament. Those hit by the car included French school children on a field trip. Witnesses said one victim ended up in the river. The dead included the attacker who stabbed a police officer at Parliament before police opened fire on him. Only minutes after the incident outside the Houses of Parliament, London Metropolitan Police sealed off the entire area, evacuated members of Parliament, and within minutes said they were treating it as a terrorist incident for now. The terrorists chose to strike at the heart of our capital city, where people of all nationalities, religions and cultures come together to celebrate the values of liberty, democracy and freedom of speech. Armed police, once rare in Britain, now common and even more so in the coming days. Police say they will be on heightened alert with extra officers on the streets for several days to come. Exactly one year after Islamic State terrorists attacked in Brussels, in the words of a police official, this became the day that London had planned for, but hoped would never happen. Now, it is a reality. And following the terror attack in London, the British Prime Minister Theresa May has praised the exception bravery of the police who confronted the radicalized lone attacker and brought the situation under control almost immediately. Speaking after the Westminster attack that left five people dead, including the attacker and 40 people injured, Mrs. May said that the threat level in Britain has been at severe and will not change. But having been updated by police and security officials, I can confirm that this appalling incident began when a single attacker drove his vehicle into pedestrians walking across Westminster Bridge, killing two people and injuring many more, including three police officers. This attacker, who was armed with a knife, then ran towards Parliament, where he was confronted by the police officers who keep us and our democratic institutions safe. Tragically, one officer was killed. The terrorist was also shot dead. The United Kingdom's threat level has been set at severe for some time, and this will not change. Acting Deputy Commissioner Rowley will give a further operational update later this evening. Our thoughts and prayers go out to all who have been affected, to the victims themselves and their family and friends who waved their loved ones off but will not now be welcoming them home. For those of us who were in Parliament at the time of this attack, these events provide a particular reminder of the exceptional bravery of our police and security services who risk their lives to keep us safe. Once again today, these exceptional men and women ran towards the danger, even as they encouraged others to move the other way. On behalf of the whole country, I want to pay tribute to them and to all our emergency services for the work they have been doing to reassure the public and bring security back to the streets of our capital city. 
that they have lost one of their own in today's attack only makes their calmness and professionalism under pressure all the more remarkable. The location of this attack was no accident. The terrorists chose to strike at the heart of our capital city, where people of all nationalities, religions and cultures come together to celebrate the values of liberty, democracy and freedom of speech. These streets of Westminster, home to the world's old, oldest parliament, are ingrained with a spirit of freedom that echoes in some of the furthest corners of the globe. And the values our parliament represents, democracy, freedom, human rights, the rule of law, command the admiration and respect of free people everywhere. That is why it is a target for those who reject those values. But let me make it clear today, as I have had cause to do before, any attempt to defeat those values through violence and terror is doomed to failure. Tomorrow morning, Parliament will meet as normal. We will come together as normal. And Londoners and others from around the world who have come here to visit this great city will get up and go about their days as normal. They will board their trains. They will leave their hotels. They will walk these streets. They will live their lives. And we will all move forward together, never giving in to terror and never allowing the voices of hate and evil to drive us apart. The Mayor of London, Sadi Khan, has assured Londoners that London remained the safest city regardless of the latest attack. He assured that London would not be cowed by terrorists. Today, London suffered a horrific attack near Parliament Square, which we're treating as a terrorist attack. A number of people have lost their lives and at least 20 people have been injured. My heart goes out to those who've lost loved ones and to everyone who's been affected. Tragically, a Metropolitan Police officer who is doing his duty protecting our city is amongst those who have been killed. And my thoughts are with his family this evening. I want to express my gratitude on behalf of all Londoners to the police and emergency services who have shown tremendous bravery in exceptionally difficult circumstances. I've spoken to the Acting Metropolitan Police Commissioner Craig Mackey and National Lead for Counter-Terrorism Policing and Acting Deputy Commissioner Mark Rowley and remain in close contact with them. Londoners should be aware that there will be additional armed and unarmed police officers on our streets from tonight in order to keep Londoners and all those visiting our city safe. I want to reassure all Londoners and all our visitors not to be alarmed. Our city remains one of the safest in the world. London is the greatest city in the world and we stand together in the face of those who seek to harm us and destroy our way of life. We always have and we always will. Londoners will never be cowed by terrorism. While the acting assistant commissioner of police, Mark Rowley, has said the lone attacker was motivated by international terrorism, he said investigations are ongoing on the incident. Police officer, PC Keith Palmer, a member of our Parliamentary and Diplomatic Protection Command. Keith, aged 48, had 15 years service and was a husband and a father. He was someone who left for work today expecting to return home at the end of his shift and he had every right to expect that would happen. I can also now confirm that there are three members of the public who have lost their lives in the attack. Specially trained family support, family liaison officers have been deployed to support them. And as I confirmed earlier, the suspected attacker was shot dead by an armed officer. Therefore, meaning that now in total we have five people who've died today. I will not comment on this stage at the identity of the attacker, but our working assumption is that he was inspired by international terrorism. I should also say at this stage that we believe now approximately 40 people have been injured, uh, including several with serious injuries, um, including three police officers, two of whom are in serious condition. Our investigation continues and is moving at a very fast pace this evening. We will be working throughout the night. We have hundreds of officers 
on this investigation and they're focusing on the suspect's motivation, preparation and his associates. We are forensically examining a complicated crime scene that covers a wide area and as with all investigations of this nature, it will take us some time to work through the painstaking work necessary to gather all the relevant evidence. Only then will the full picture be known. Officers are taking statements from the hundreds of people who were nearby as today's tack unfolded and we're seizing and examining CCTV. I can also report that the lockdown of Parliament has concluded and we're working to reduce the evidence cordoned off. I'd like to thank the public and parliamentarians for their patience and assistance as we carried out detailed examinations and work in that area. As the Prime Minister said earlier on, the UK threat level has been at severe for some time and, it's, and this level is not changing. But we have enhanced the scale of our policing operations at present to protect communities across the country. As we continue to investigate today's horrific events, we do want to reassure the public that police and partners will do everything possible to protect them. As a precautionary measure, over the next few days, we've increased the number of officers on duty, armed and unarmed, to provide a highly visible, reassuring presence. This will continue for as long as is necessary. Terrorists have a clear aim. That is to create discord, distrust and to create fear. The police stand with all communities in the UK and will take action against anybody who seeks to undermine society, especially where their crimes are motivated by hate. We must recognise now that our Muslim communities will feel anxious at this time, given the past behaviour of extreme right-wing groups, and we will continue to work with all community leaders over coming days. It is essential for us to remain vigilant, but also to work together, police and communities, to unite against those who, those who seek through violence and extremism to threaten, to intimidate and to cause fear. We ask the public to be alert and to report any suspicious activity to the police, calling our anti-terrorism hotline on 0800 789 321 or dialing 999. Today is an incredibly sad and sombre day, especially for the Metropolitan Police Service and everyone is affected. But it is only right that I finish by mentioning the pride I feel in the swift and brave response from our officers, especially from those who without um, fear for their own safety confronted the terrorist. Thank you. I'll take a couple so of questions. No, you're not going to use identity on air, but do you think you know who the man is that carried out this attack? We think we know who the, um, who the attacker is, and as I say, we're working to look at associates. I know there are some proactive investigative journalists out there. I'd ask for restraint to allow our investigation to move forward without being troubled by unnecessary reporting. Can you confirm if he was a British national uh, and whether there are concerns that there may be others involved in this and the potential for other attacks? As I've said, it's an ongoing investigation. To give any more details about him, associates or our investigations would be inappropriate, so I can't answer that question. Can we know the nationalities of the uh, England? So um, we know we have a range of nationalities amongst the English people. We're working with their, uh, working with their host countries. As you'd expect in a tourist location such as, um, such as Westminster Bridge, um, it'd be wrong for me to uh, mention those now until we've managed to liaise with the host countries and their families. You said it was related to international terrorism. Are we talking about so Islamic State at this point? Uh, so, yeah, so Islamist related terrorism is our assumption. Uh, any concern for the next hours and for tomorrow, for example? Um, so in terms of levels of concern, the Prime Minister said earlier that we're not changing the national threat level. Our independent body that looks at those issues has decided that's not necessary at this stage. So we're still at the same level of severe, an attack remains highly likely. But given what's happened, as on a precautionary basis, across the country we're stepping up police patrols, unarmed and armed. And US President Donald Trump has condemned the terror attack at Westminster, London. Mr Trump spoke with the British Prime Minister, Theresa May, to assure Britain of US's support. White House spokesperson Sean Spices made this known and said the president also praised the quick intervention of the British police. First at the top, I wanted to note that the president uh, has been briefed on the situation in London. Uh, he just spoke to Prime Minister May and we'll have a readout on that situation and that call soon. Uh, we obviously condemn today's attack in Westminster, which the United Kingdom is treating as an act of terrorism. 
uh, and we applaud the quick response that the Br British police and their first responders uh, made to the situation. The victims uh, in this are, thought, are in our thoughts and our prayers. The City of Lundis, London and Her Majesty's Government have the full support of the U.S. Government in responding to the attack and bringing those to justice who are responsible. We will provide you with further updates as warranted and, as I mentioned, a readout of the President's call with the Prime Minister. The city of Brussels has marked the first anniversary of the terror attack that killed 32 people. Three coordinated suicide bombing attacks tore through the city on 22nd March 2016. ISIS claimed responsibility for that attack. In the political heart of Europe, the EU Commission headquarters in Brussels, a minute's silence Wednesday to remember the 32 victims who died in the terror attacks on the city a year ago. But critics say security failures by the European Union have allowed terrorists to carry out attacks. Tony Smith is former Director General of Britain's Border Force. There were significant lessons to be learned both from Brussels and, and from Paris and more recently from Berlin. And that is really about how good are uh, the border agencies in those countries, or all the agencies, in collaborating with one another. A March report written by the European Commission's Security Union Task Force and leaked to Britain's Guardian newspaper warns security services are unable to carry out basic checks, like searching cross-national databases using biometric data such as fingerprints. The mastermind of the Paris attacks in 2015, Abdel Hamid Abaoud, was the subject of an international arrest warrant, yet was able to travel from Belgium to Syria via Egypt in 2013 before returning to Europe. So when you're looking at controlling people are crossing the external frontier, some of whom are European passport holders, the officers there aren't getting the tools, the information and the data they need. Anis Amri, who drove a truck into a Berlin Christmas market in December, killing 12 people, entered Germany from Italy via Switzerland, despite appearing on a terror suspect list. Free movement within the EU of people, it's very easy to move around the EU with weapons, quite often undocumented. The leaked EU report suggests officials are considering beefing up police checks within the passport-free Schengen zone. But there is political opposition. Swedish member of the European Parliament, Malin Bjork, was in the Brussels airport when the bombers struck a year ago. There is all this emphasis on militarized and surveillance-based security, and I think, I think it's inefficient, and I think it's not uh, long-term at all. Many of the Brussels and Paris suspects lived in or operated from the Molenbeek district of Brussels. Belgian media reported Monday that police have uncovered 51 organizations there with suspected ties to terrorism. We see that there are no longer any departures for Syria and that there are few returnees. The problem centers on people who are here in the municipality, and we keep an eye on these people. Security experts say the current border systems are failing to tackle that homegrown terror threat. But in Europe, there remains strong political support for freedom of movement, seen as one of the pillars of the European Union. With that, we conclude the news roundup for this week. Thank you for being part of the program. Enjoy the rest of your week. Bye. As part of our continued efforts to reach the African and other ethnic communities in the United Kingdom with greater impacts and create a platform to hear your silent and unheard views in this hugely green community in the United Kingdom, our channel, Ben TV, presents to you another live current affairs television program. Our focus on the program is to review and discuss issues around the diaspora community in the UK. The program offers you that unrestricted voice on issues affecting you in the UK. Join us live every Monday at 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Another business segment of Dialogue in Diaspora, 2 to 3 p.m. every Monday. But guess what? You know you can be part of the program. Just send us an email at bentelevisionuk at gmail.com. Dialogue in Diaspora, your voice, your opinion on our TV.